Greetings, greetings, greetings. You are now tuned into the vault. Trust Christian O, not to control everything. Just want to thank you for tuning in live, listening to the replay. Always appreciate everybody that tunes in live, listens in in the replay. Always appreciate it. Today's episode is the vault 325. Trustee, Sunday trustee training, the true calling of trusteeship. Always appreciate everybody that tunes in live. Everybody that tunes in in the replay, this is a episode that we have been preparing for, for the trustees for a while now, so we appreciate everybody that likes and subscribes, new listeners, old listeners, always hitting the like and the subscribe button, I uh, appreciate everybody that is listening live and tuning into the replay to all the episodes. So once again, this is the Vault episode 325, Sunday trustee training, the true calling of trusteeship. Just want to thank Memphis, Tennessee for tuning in live, listening to replay. Always appreciate Memphis, Tennessee tuning in live, listening to replay. They're tuning in live, so appreciate them. But appreciate everybody that tunes in and replay. And feel free to type in where you're listening into uh, or where you're listening from, uh, where you're listening in from, uh, into the chat. Always appreciate that. So this episode... Sunday trustee training, the true calling of trusteeship is an episode that we just want to convey to the trustees that have engaged with the the vault through trustee training that, you know, we always appreciate all the trustees that have ever engaged, appreciate Humboldt, California, we got Humboldt, California, toning in live, listen, replay, Appreciate Humble California for tuning in live, listening to replay. Once again, the true calling of a trustee is knowing that you've been called. Many are called, but few are chosen. So many people think that there's going to be a time where they're going to be chosen. Where really, you've already been called. Once you hear the vault, we talk about trustee training. You're not in trusteeship, but you would like to be in trusteeship. This is one of those opportunities. It's an opportunity to be in trusteeship, be in a private uh, setting, be mentored, be trained in private trusteeship. That's what the calling is, is to come into a sector where you're going to have to learn we're going to go ahead out right early and say you're going to have to change some some habits if if there's not prior success but either either way there still is a mindset shift from public to private that's the calling are you willing to shift your mindset from public to private and then be able to operate in both sectors we get a lot of trustees that they listen throughout the years and they've come through. We've, we've heard trustees say, oh, I've listened to every episode. You got to continue listening. You got to continue learning. You got to continue expanding your comfort zone. This is the calling of a trustee. Because it's this, we, we don't want to say it's the sacrificial lamb, but these are, when we talk about first generationers, that are literally managing a state, managing wealth from the first generation to the second generation, we're going to see, a, 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 to a degree, a sacrifice where this family member in particular has has put in the work, has built an estate, and that's where we see the advantage is that one member, member of the family, particularly previous generation trustee, has taken on the responsibility has taken on the mantle of leadership to do what? To put themselves in a position where the family can have generational wealth. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been called. You've been called to be the sacrificial lamb. You've been called to be the first generation, if you're first gen, second gen, second gens are trained into it. It's easier for them. 
it's easier for them. They know the responsibility from birth. Whereas people that are first gen may not have it at birth, may not have it at youth. The true calling says that you're in the moment and you're saying, hey, I need to know what I can do to change my family's outlook. The true calling of trusteeship is for the family ones, the ones that are family oriented. Appreciate Oklahoma for tuning in live, listening to replay. Always appreciate Oklahoma for tuning in live, listening to replay. The true calling of trusteeship. It calls individuals to get into greater networks. We're talking about first gens because there's more first gens than there are second and third gens. Second and third gens are small numbers of the population. And a true calling of trusteeship will always be the same. You have to go to get educated to further the family estate. It is to acquire information. You have to acquire more information because that is what wealthy people hold. They hold intellectual property. The true calling of a trustee is to acquire more valuable information that can help the family stay wealthy. It's about staying wealthy. How do you stay wealthy? You have to have the right systems and right information in place. Once you have the right systems and the right tools in place, you can play the game fairly. You can play the game evenly. You can play the game as if you had a chance. How many people are swinging from the dugout? That means they're not even on the pitch. They're, they haven't gotten off the game of life yet, which is working. The true calling of trusteeship is to own nothing, control everything. The true calling of trusteeship is to say, I don't need to own anything, but I definitely need to be able to be in control of assets from the correct position. That's the true calling. The true calling says you go to the workshops. Why? Because that's where you meet other trustees and you know it's bigger than you. It's about multiple generations being networked to a network of people in trust. That's why. The trustees, you say, you know what? I'm not going to work for money anymore. I'm going to work for my last name. I'm going to build the family estate. Is this too eloquent? Is it too easy? Or is it too much of the truth? Because it's the true calling of a trustee where trustees may sacrifice families at times. Time with family so they can build the family estate. The true calling of the first gen is usually giving of time more time than the second gen second gen remember is not having to build from zero the first gen built from zero the second gen is not building from zero the third gen is not building from zero so when we see the first first particular in trusteeship moving from first gen to second gen that's where most of the work is done the second gen definitely takes care of work sometimes. The true calling is families working together. You being able to corral your family. Everybody says, oh, why is it not easy to get my family trust Christian get going? Why won't my family do it so easily? Because you're first gen. Second gen has family ties now. They have reasons to have people that are in position. True calling and trusteeship was to think outside of yourself and to think about the mission at hand. How it's doable. How you, the odds are in your favor when you start getting up there swinging to, at the plate. The odds are in your favor. The true calling and trusteeship is to be accountable. That's what the, the, the true calling is all about. It's about saying, you know what? We're going we're gonna to do whatever it takes, you know, legally, morally, and ethically, and make it happen. This generation. And it does look a little gritty. 
sometimes it may look a little selfish. Because you are taking the family name and placing it somewhere. It's among time. It's among this, this, this ephemeral space that we're in. Many people benefited from people giving donations or endowments to hospitals, parks, museums, art institutes. People got the benefit from these things. They got the benefit from education, from these endowments. The true calling of trusteeship is are you willing to make money giving it away? That's the true calling. Are you willing to make money giving it away? How many people talk like that on the public side, making money giving it away? Because they're not. They want to own everything. And that's why it's trust Christian own nothing, control everything. When the trustees say, oh, I learned this, I want to do this, I want to live that life. Are you in halfway or are you in all the way? Are you all in? We have an episode. Are you all in? Some people are testing the waters. Some people are seeing if it works. True calling the trusteeship says you have to have faith and risk. You have to have good risk management. You have to have good time management. You have to have good task management. These are essential skills in the trustee training. Christian at TrustChristian.com and rolling in trustee training right now. Christian at TrustChristian.com is the email. To get into trustee training, just email us over. People say, oh, why don't you have this? Why don't you have that? Because we've been walking off referrals. The trustee training has been for private families. Not for us to be sitting here bragging about the families that have come through. Do you know that that's what the trustee train is all about? Is about ensuring that you know how to protect your privacy. So many people think that we're in the age of no privacy already in 2021. But then people say they get their emails lost. Are you serious? The you calling a trusteeship right now in 2021 is to be focused on asset protection. Asset preservation and assets growth. Assets under, under, that are growing. Seeing what the percentage is every single month over month, year over year. The true calling of trusteeship requires many things, ladies and gentlemen. It requires us to be a good steward. It requires this. So many people want to, oh, I just want to get the asset protection. I just want asset protection. That's what they want. But that's the true calling. You got to stop being a liability. How do you stop being a liability? By owning nothing, control everything. Trust Christian, own nothing, control everything. So many people have been programmed into this way of thought process. And then they hear the vault and then they say, okay, I haven't heard this thought process. And some may have heard this thought process, but some may have not heard this thought process. Many say, okay, I need that thought process. I need to know what that thought process is. Because it sounds like the position that I'm in may not be in the advantage. Because I'm in that position and I'm a liability. That's what we hear. But now we get to the point where you don't want to be a liability. You want to be an asset grower, an asset protector, an asset preserver, and doing things in the correct position, the proper position. Appreciate all the trustees that are tuning in live, listening to replay, doing our best to answer the questions. When people ask, you know, many are called, but few are chosen. 
that that's the reality of this situation, ladies and gentlemen. More people just want the protection than they want to learn trusteeship. You got to learn trusteeship so you can create the manual for the next generation. But so many people say, oh, you know, well, I don't know where to start. You got to start journaling right now what you're doing as a trustee. That's the true calling. Creating minutes daily. That's the calling of a trustee. Really? Yes, 365 pages, a volume every year for the next 10, 15, 20, 30 years, passing along to the next generation so they can read these books. It may not be a lot of words on every page. You can keep it to almost a Twitter post, 150 characters, just something that says, this is the decision and the thought process. This is what happened in society that day. So when the next generation of trustees come up, they can go back and read a, a document that shows them, hey, this is what was going on in the times. And these are the highlights of at least a senior trustee that has bequeathed an as, a, 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 a asset base over to, quote unquote, yourself as a trustee. It's calling you to read the document. How many people read trust documents? How many people read contracts? Because remember, trust our contracts, correct? But how many people are willing to read every day now? They're more used to skimming. Trustees, the calling of a trustee is to read. Oh, wow, I got to read a case a day? Maybe not a case a day, but you have to read cases. Trustees say, oh, well, how many times did you read the case, trust Christian? Oh, not to control everything? How, how many times did you read the case? Many times. More than seven each case. The basic cases in trusteeship, easy. The top 10, 15, 20 precedent cases in the United States. Yes, you know them. You have them on standby. You have to collect the information. How can you be? Think about how cheap the trustee training is. If that's the case, how can you? How can you be successful if you don't have the information? They say, "Well, you know, the game's not to be sold. It's, it's not to be told. It's meant to be sold." What is? What do you think that means? It means you gotta pay for the information. You have to pay for the education. That's the calling with your energy. You have to. Really, that's what it is, trust Christian. It's just paying for the information. And once I get the information, do I got to do something with it? Because we know many of people that got the information and they didn't do anything with it. Right. We do too. But it's not about them. It's about your family taking care of your part. And being able to bring other families together. Because people in trust deal with people in trust. So you got to get out your comfort zone. You got to get rid of the stereotypes. You got to get rid of the limiting beliefs. You got to let go of color barriers almost. And business. Oh man, trust Christian, you know we going international. We going international, trustees. Are you going international? You know, I'm just going to stay over in America because that's the greatest place. That's the land of milk and honey, you know. But then they got other places that are like Singapore and they making a lot of money there. They making money, a lot of money in Qatar. They making money where the oil places are selling oil in the Middle East. Abu Dhabi, Dubai. Oh, no, but the land of milk and honey, they doing so great. The true calling of a trustee is definitely to get outside your comfort zone. Do your best to be your best. Is it a lot of new learning? You pretty much learn that the true calling of a trustee is learn that you got to be invested. Everybody wants you to be invested in what you're doing, right? So did you invest in yourself? That's it. You just got to keep collecting the education that's going to improve yourself. And your family. How valuable you are you to the community? An asset base, a knowledge base. What can you dispense among the kids in order for them to pick up a skill set? Whether it's creative finance, whether it's construction. The true calling of a trustee is to make sure that they have a team in place. 
Do you have a team? A reliable team? The true calling of a trustee is to be mentored. Most trustees are mentored. You go to a, you go through a Wharton school, a business school of finance, a Wharton. You go to these type of schools to get an education. The true calling of a trustee The true calling of trusteeship. Well, as you all can see, or hear, ladies and gentlemen, the calling is beyond your lifetime. And so when you can think out two and three and four and five lifetimes, a hundred years out, where you know, hey, look, we might be able to have a small piece of this rock with silver, with gold. Think about that. You're able to acquire silver and gold on the pennies on the dollar when you know it's going to be up one generation, two generation, three generation. And, and people say, well, well, you know, the, the gold and silver is not any worth anything. It's been around for thousands of years and it keeps coming around. N no wonder. Because the families that understand that it's a conductor of electricity, people that understand it has, it has medicinal and industrial properties. But oh, no, no, you know, why would we go hold such a precious asset? But we're going to hold other things that per the ounce, it's not worth much. How much is an ounce of milk compared to an ounce of gold? How much is an ounce of milk compared to, a, a, a you know, think about these things. Appreciate Carrollton, Ohio for tuning in live, listen to replay. Always appreciate Carrollton, Ohio for tuning in live, listen to replay. Right now we see the power of such a small asset. Why? Because these people on the planet right now are sending gold into space. They're sending silver into space. What do you think can can handle the the heat from the sun as it's going around in the solar system? Not every metal can handle that. You think aluminum cans can? The true calling of trusteeship is to read magazines. You know, some people think that, you know, the magazine game is completely over. But as you all can see, magazines still hold their weight. People make their own private magazines. They make their public magazines and different things of that nature. So magazines really help. Publications, paper has still held, held true. Even if you're looking at it online, there's nothing wrong with that. We, but still having... Uh, print is uh, still very, very important because we're talking about reading once again. No, but even still in print magazines, you can have pictures. We're not going to talk about that today, though. The true calling of a trustee is definitely to get very adverse on different subject matters because you're going to be dealing with different people at many different levels. If you're a senior trustee managing over a million dollars in assets, you should know property law. Should have some education in property law. Should be able to talk property law. Should be able to talk real estate with uh, real estate people or uh, otherwise uh, with people that are in that field. Uh, particularly if the uh, the trustee is managing property. If trustees managing real estate property, tr tr trustees should be in the law library. Should have some level of education with. Uh, Property law for sure, real estate law, should be able to go in, look at a mortgage contract, a deed contract, um, look at those things, look at the percentages, look at how much the agent should be making. Um, these are senior conversations for asset managers, property managers, over uh, trustees that are over managing property, um, things of that nature. Um, calling it, they're calling it, it goes deeper than that, you know, because we're not always just talking about property. Property is always going to be really vague and things of that nature. But when we look into uh, other realms, uh, such as title, um, not just property, you talk about title, because there's different levels of title. Um, you know, there's many different levels of things in when we talk about the calling of trusteeship. But we know it's based off of a contract. And contract makes the law. So the biggest thing is just getting in the law library, looking at contracts. Um, sometimes, the, you know, when people say, well, what's the, what's the, uh, we got to think of a word that will come up with. Because if somebody says, well, the problem is, is I got to go in there and find a problem. What's the solution? The solution is reading case law. So that's what trustees end up doing in trustee training is reading cases. Uh, we end up reading cases a lot, of, making sure you understand the basics. I mean, we really could go over a lot more cases, but at the end of the day, you got to read the cases on your own. 
This is what makes the mark of a good trustee, uh, excellent trustee, the con of a trustee, is that you got to read the cases at home by yourself, possibly, or with your family so they can understand what's precedent, what you're standing on, the quote unquote law you're standing on as a trustee. This isn't legal advice. This isn't financial advice. We always want to give that disclaimer. We just want to make sure that you all as as trustees know that, hey, you know, this is what's going on. You have to build it and they will come. You have to build yourself so they can come. You have to build the conversation of because so they can come. How many people are doing that, though? Are you? He would say, oh, trust Christian, I got to study every day. We know people that don't study every day and they're still making money in the private. Why? Because they pay for the relationship. The calling is you got to pay for the relationship, which gets you the information because you got to get the information. Right. How do you get their information through the relationship? But so many people say, oh, is that the real mark of the, is that the real calling of the trustee? Is that the true calling of a trustee? Is that the true calling of trusteeship is to pay for a, a relationship? Why not? Now you have access to the information in the private. You're paying for mentorship. That's what you're paying for. There's many ways to do it. You can do it in gold and silver. How many people are thinking that way, though? Oh, wow, trust Christian. Trust Christian in the vault. How are we going to do this? For families, for generations to come. How do you get wealth circulating in the community? You got to get them acquiring assets. You don't get wealthy just by holding paper currency. So that's where people, oh, they want to spit on paper currency and the cash is king. Well, what happened to another asset that's still liquid? That's what we're looking at. The true calling of trusteeship. It requires focus beyond measure. We had someone the other day say, oh, I want to get a business started, but I have so much to do. I just, I just, I got to take a deep breath. I got to take a deep breath. Yeah, you got to take a deep breath because the journey of a thousand miles starts with a step. You know how the saying goes. You know, the journey of a thousand steps starts with a step. You got to take a step. You got to take the first step. The calling of trusteeship is to invest in yourself, which is to take a risk and see if you can establish a relationship with the private. Because right now you might not know anybody in the private if you're first gen. How do you get in the private? You got to find somebody that's in the private. Period. We always tell you all to Google private lawyers. If it's so easy, Google private lawyers. Appreciate the Bronx for tuning in live, listening to replay. Always appreciate the Bronx for tuning in live, listening to replay. What's the true calling of trusteeship? You got to be dedicated to getting mentored from a private mentor. Otherwise, how would you get the information? Once you get the information, you got to value those mentors. But we also understand that you got to learn the information for yourself, for your family. And once you have it, you got to continue to establish mentoring relationships. Why? Because it's a legacy that you're passing along. Senior trustees have done things that you haven't done. You can always learn. If you stay in a student mode, in a learning mode, you're going to have mentors. So many people say, oh, trust Christian in the vote. This is why you do it. You have to. You have to build successors. Well, how do you build a successor? You have to be mentored. Because a successor is your mentee. That's what the trustees are. Their successors to the fall. To moving on with their lives, protecting their families, and looking to be something great. And how do you do that? They do that through the trust Christian own not the control everything model. That's how you do it. 
And when you do it to a successful point, you're a pillar in the community. The calling of trusteeship is to get to where you make money giving it away. And the charity and the foundation making an impact in the community like all the other endowments and foundations. That's the true calling. But are you stuck at trusteeship? Oh, trust Christian. I got to change my ways. I got to learn to get on the schedule. I got to learn to invest all the way into the end. I got to follow through. You got to follow through? That's the calling? You got to follow through now? You thought you were going to get the Rolls Royce? Or did you just want to get the Lexus? Which is nothing more than a Toyota. See, the difference in the level of information. Rolls Royce are handmade. They only have a limited number. Less to come out every year. The true calling of trusteeship is to learn to make money giving it away. And if you're not able to do that, it's because people are still participating in the rat race. What they say, what's the cliche? You got to make money, make money for you. Are you doing that? Are you investing in your education to make it happen? See, you're born in the West if you're born in the West. See, you're born to where you have tools that can make money without you. Because the technology is developed. What happened though? People are making money from jail through the internet. Did y'all know that? There's people making money through the internet in jail. Y'all, y'all, y'all think this is a game. People are sitting in jail making money through the internet, y'all. That's that's what's going on in the world nowadays because the internet is a le- it's a level playing field. They, they're people they they try to get these accounts. People are sitting on the internet listening to stuff, watching. They have access to the internet. Wow. True calling of trusteeship is for you to just be a trustee. For you to own nothing, control everything. But is that so hard to live? Well, George Christian, I'm not going to have my Amex card no more. I'm not going to have my personal credit cards anymore. I got to build up everything correctly now in the right business perspective. That's basically it. I got to pay for an assistant to make sure I'm on time in my schedule. (laughs) You got to travel. Maybe you don't. Maybe you're just a local steward. Maybe you're a local trustee. And there's nothing wrong with that. How does this go? People being trustees, huh? Everybody wants to be a trustee. The true calling of trusteeship is just to do your job. A lot of times, people in life, they they don't want to do what's in the job description. But how would people know what's in the job description when they're not versed in contracts and trusteeship? You got to be versed in the contract so you can know what to do and what you can't do as a trustee. That's it. We've we've sat here or stood here for 30-something minutes and went over that. What, What jewels can you drop for us? That can, you know, make us be better trustees, trust Christian. What what jewels can you drop? Well, the first thing you got to do is you got to know that the best investment you will ever be able to make is in yourself. Once you get that through your mind, you'll always know that, look, any investment that the family makes, there's always a calculated risk. So you got to learn good risk management skills. So you're going to invest in your risk management skills. And your risk management skills come from your ability to solve problems. And that comes from an education. We've had the plethora of backgrounds that have contacted us through consultations throughout the years and in the trustee training. They all come come from various backgrounds. 
But one thing that these people have seemed to come through the door with is they are looking to solve, which is a generational curse, which is not having the proper uh, structure in place, family structure in place. They needed to have family structure. And so that's what they came to the vault and they got. They said we need organization in our family. Trust Christian in the vault. Own nothing. Control everything. Why? Because we need organization in our families. And that's what they get. The vault doesn't do the work for you. For first gens or second gens or any, any gen. You do it for the family. You do it. So you understand that you're training next generation. Okay, don't be afraid to invest in education. If it doesn't work out, just know it was a lesson, not a loss. It was a lesson. That's what it was, a lesson. Okay. Starting to get it now. So you got to get the education, which is a lesson. How much does it cost, trust Christian? Ladies and gentlemen, are you willing to put out 100K for your private education? Because we can tell you that right now. If you're not willing to put out at least 30 to 50 to $100,000 in a private education, which is minimal dollars. Ladies and gentlemen, you're, think about it. What about the losses of money? Isn't that a part of the education? So let's count the losses in money. The losses in money are in education. So that's expensive. You have to be willing to have the losses in money to be a part of the education because it's a part of the education. It's not a loss in money. It's just a part of the education. That's all it is. It's risk management. You're going to lose money and you're going to make money. That's risk management. It's risk management skills, ladies and gentlemen. You have to start taking better and better calculated risk. So in turn, you're just learning how to manage risk. That's it. Manage time. You have to manage time. How do you not know to manage time? This is something we hear across the board. Ladies and gentlemen, people say, oh, trust Christian. Give us the game, trust Christian. Come on, it's not meant to be sold. It's meant to be told. Can't you just tell us? Give us a couple crackpot jewels and gems. So you got to study nine minutes every day. This is what the mentors say. You got to study nine minutes every day. Start out with a complete cycle, less than 10 minutes. You got to start out with a nine. So we just read, we read, we read, we read cases for nine minutes every day. Of course, that's not a long time, but if, the faster you get at reading, the good you are at reading. You read a case, you could read, not to say you could read a whole case in nine minutes, but you may be able to read a case in nine minutes. But you're going to study for nine minutes every day. We told this for the trustees for, for everything in their life when it comes to doing anything great. You got, we, we tell them, do it for nine minutes, and they do it, and then they get the results. But is, are you dedicated to the nine? Are you dedicated to the nine minutes? Do you have a stopwatch? Do you got a watch? Do you got a timer? Are you counting down 60 seconds nine times? That's how, we, that's how the mentor told us to do it, to study. Start out with the easy stuff. Make the, stuff, make the hard stuff easy, and make the easy stuff easier, <laughs> you know? But you got to do it for nine minutes. Get in there. Get in there and do what you got to do. It's the beginning. So the trustees learn that. Trustees say, okay, I learn how to manage my time. I learn how to get up every day. And I learn how to give thanks for nine minutes. They give thanks for nine minutes. We got trustees giving thanks for nine minutes. You know how much energy you're cultivating when you're, when you're saying thank you for nine minutes throughout your day, when it's 24 hours in a day, when you're giving thanks when you first get up in the a.m.? When you give thanks as soon as you give up, get up in the a.m.? That's the calling of a trustee. This is what the senior trustees talk to us about. They talk to us about you giving thanks when you get up in the a.m. Something that you can manage if you're second gen. You're being thankful for the first gen sacrifice. If you're third gen, you're thankful for the first and the second gen. Continue in the legacy. Continue in the pedigree. And now you have the opportunity to display the greatness. Again, the thankfulness. That's what we have. That's the true calling of trusteeship. Are you willing to be thankful to have a trustee position? But oh, no, no. Will they squander it away? For their lack of what? Their people perish because they lack of knowledge. Because they don't have the knowledge. You got to get the knowledge. But you got to pay for the relationship. But oh no, I don't like nobody talking to me like that. 
you know, because I just, you know, when, when I was doing all the other stuff, the heathen stuff, it wasn't working in. But when you come into trusteeship, you come into etiquette, you come into order, you come into organization, you come into structure. This is what they demand in trustee training. They're yearning for it and they get it. Their thirst is quenched. There's so many things to do, though, trust, trust Christian in the vault. It is. But the first thing you got to do, the true calling of trusteeship is to invest in yourself and invest in your private education. Invest in the relationships that you're not going to get on the public side. Because once you get in the private sector, you still got to invest in other relationships. And don't you ever forget that. You always going to be investing in relationships. But see, so many people think, oh, I don't have to spend no money and break bread with my brother or my sister or break bread with this person. You don't think that you have to invest if you don't think that you have to invest. See, that's where you get it twisted when you're on the public side. See, you're spending money on the public side. But when you're on the private side, you invest in. That's the difference. And it ain't going to never change. But don't know trust Christian in the vault. You know, I'm trying to spend money. I'm trying to go on vacations instead of going on private family retreats, instead of going on site visits, instead of having a private family pay for the, fam the private family business trips. Oh, that's the difference. It's the language. It's the perspective. Oh, no, trust Christian. It's not for everybody, trust Christian. There's a true calling for trusteeship. There's a true calling to trusteeship. Yes, you're right. But are you answering it? Did you answer it yet? Or is this just something you just pity paddling with? Something you just looking to see if it works? From the outside looking in, I need to read some more documents over the internet, trust Christian in the vault? Not at all. You've come to the right place. We do private workshops with the trustees. So it's not about just yourself. It's about the family getting the, the connections they need. It's like going to college. It's you're, you're getting a network when you join a fraternity or a sorority or you become part of the alumni association. Appreciate everybody for tuning in live, listening to replay. Trustees, you know what the calling is. It's to keep getting over yourself. Learning yourself. Becoming one of the best taskmasters out there. Task management. Project management. Project management skills are everything, ladies and gentlemen. That's what you're learning when you come to trustee training in the vault. You're learning, you're learning that. You got to learn that. You got to learn project management because that's all you're doing as trustees. You're managing different projects because the bigger the family uh, estate gets, the bigger the projects the family is going to be managing because you're going to have children, grandchildren. There's going to be multiple generations that are going to be inside of this. See, we're long-term thinkers. We're thinking long-term here, ladies and gentlemen. We're thinking about the big picture. We're thinking about multiple generations to fit within uh, a basic situation of 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 of, 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 of what we're trying to ma manifest here, which is generational wealth, which people say they're always looking to manifest. Oh, I'm looking to manifest generational wealth, but I'm not going to pass along a daily little, you know, Twitter feed. I'm going to make them go on the internet and make sure that if if, if Twitter goes down, then they they won't have it, right? So you got to create the private manual. That's the difference. That's the calling. Are you going to create the private manual for your family? Appreciate you for tuning in live, listening to replay. Always appreciate all the trustees for tuning in live, listening to replay. We know that we've given a lot of content here. Feel free to share this, like this. We look forward to hearing from you all. Christian at TrustChristian.com. We enrolling. We got the next workshop coming up in October. Look forward to hearing from you. Peace.